Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. So, Baruch Hashem, I'm in a deep, deep uh, trouble. Deep, deep trouble. I have problems that I don't know how to solve. And I, uh, I need help from heaven to assist me. There was a, a decree that took place something like 3,000 years ago that Hashem, the creator of the world, said, In that day, in that day I'm going to hide the fact that I'm hiding my face from them. Hashem said not only that He will hide His face from His people, he also said that he will hide the fact that he is about to hide his face from them. It means that they won't know. Coming. Welcome. Welcome. Hashem said, I'm going to hide the fact that I'm hiding my face from them. It means that they won't know who to look, how to look, what to do with themselves. We see today, <coughs> I'll tell you something, it's very deep and Baruch Hashem, on that I can thank Hashem with the full, full mouth, with the full heart, that I'm not scared of, of, of people, that I'm not scared of what the people will think about me, what people will say. I, I went through so much until today that I've been fed up from that fear and like, Thank you, enough is enough. I already know what, what am I doing and, and what's my mission and like, I don't care. We are in a deep, deep problem. Our situation is so hard because many of our leaders in this generation are not understanding that they themselves are still stuck under that curse and decree that they themselves don't know what they don't know, what they lack of. And they feel like they know. And they're going and teaching with that feeling that they know. For an example, the Torah is telling us, Hashem Himself, opened his mouth, revealed himself through the clouds, opened the sky, changed all nature and revealed his godliness and spoke through Moses and by himself to us and revealed <coughs> his divine will that we will keep to our mitzvot 100%. No doubt about it. Hashem said it. 600,000 men were there. More than 600,000 women and children were there. Millions of people were standing, no contradictions, no arguments, everyone agreed. Testaments from here till the, 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 the Verizon. No doubt about this moment took place. Hashem said, you should keep my Torah and commanded us. Great. Now, in later generations, the righteous people were enjoying all the time, the leaders of our nation and of the world were enjoying all the time from prophecies of Hashem. Hashem was keep on revealing Himself through the prophets to His people. Always when we needed to hear some news, we had Yeshua, we had after it in the Shoftim, the judges, we had the kings, we had the prophets, always there was someone that was able to come Yoshua and Yirmiyahu and Daniel and Nehemiah and Azariah and on and on and on and hundreds of prophets, Elijah the prophets, Elisha the prophets, and like hundreds of prophets came to us in the generations and were able to deliver the real will of Hashem, what the people were misinterpreting, what the people were missing between the lines, the real will of Hashem, the real intention. But from the moment of the destruction of the temple, we lost the prophecy. Today there are no prophets anymore. 
We have only the wise people, the righteous ones, those ones that their memory is strong and they received something in a traditional way from the... Welcome. Welcome. So happy you came. And in tradition, they received the knowledge from the last generation. If we will set our mind a little bit to the calculation of time, we're going to see that it was not so long ago that Mount Sinai took place. Thank you. 3,000 years ago, if you will say that in every generation, you had at least one person that was 100 years old. So from Mount Sinai until today, you're talking about 30 people. 30 people that saw the, 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 the last generation. Only 30 people from Moses in Mount Sinai receiving the Holy Tablets until today. 100 years and he saw the next generation. 100 years and he saw the next generation. 30 people. That's it. From Mount Sinai, receiving the Holy Tablets from Hashem Il Barach Himself. Fantastic, not so far. But a big change took place in our lives and we lost those gifts of Hashem that is called prophecies. And today we're lost. Why? Because those wise people, those righteous leaders of our nation found themselves praying and not being answered. Found themselves doing the ritual obligations, the mitzvot, and not seeing the results that had been seen in the time of the temple, in time of Beit HaMikdash. But because that they didn't want it to change anything, and they didn't want it to move even one step from the commandments and from the right and honest and sincere and straight path that we've been commanded by Hashem and His holy messengers, so they are telling us always, keep the Torah mitzvot, keep the Torah mitzvot, keep the Torah mitzvot, keep the Torah mitzvot. And they're right. 100% right. But what happened? What that happened is that we lost the right intention. That we lost the wisdom of the soul and we're still being pushed all of the time to keep the Torah mitzvot. And we're not saying that we're not supposed to. We're supposed to. But we must look for the inner side of how to keep Torah mitzvot, to look and to seek for the real intention of Hashem while keeping Torah mitzvot. Because if you pray with no intention, it's like a body without a soul. Because from the time of the destruction of the temple, instead of sacrifices to come and to bring animals, to slaughter them and to put them on the altar, we received prayers. Today when we pray, so the prayer is instead of the sacrifice. So it means that those prayers can erase our sins, can uplift us to those holy zones that we will be sensitive enough to sense and to feel the will of the Creator. Now what happened? People today in our generation don't even have that heart of those holy righteous ones that were guiding us 1,000 years ago and 500 years ago and 300 years ago. So today we're talking about huge amounts of people that are talking about something that no one understands. We lost the soul in so many ways that even if you go to a rabbi, that even if you go and consult some teacher, someone that you assume that he has the knowledge because he is very learned, very talented and learned so many years and, and he knows all the rules and all the obligations and he can tell you what rules are, are, are being told and what are the sources of those rules and where they came from and to put the right finger, the, his finger on the right spot and to show you, and He will guide you. He will guide you still in an outside, external aspect of what that you need to reach. Because really your solution is not only physical, because your troubles and your sorrow and your pain is emotional. Now, most of us, and I think that I'm talking about 100% of us, but being careful, 
I think that most of us, we tried to keep Torah and Mitzvot as a solution for our problems. We tried to keep Shabbat that our lives will be better. We tried to put filin that our lives will be better. Women tried to cover their heads that their lives will be better. Tried to dress more modestly that their lives will be better. Tried to eat kasher that our life will be better. Trying to learn Torah that our life will improve, will be better. And we don't see those results. We can go and learn Torah and to come back home and there are wars in the house. There are arguments with no ends, fights and misunderstandings. And we're going to the mikveh and purifying ourselves and we don't sense that purification. And we're learning Torah and we don't feel, maybe while you're learning Torah, you feel some spirituality, you feel some kind of pleasure, some kind of joy, of inner satisfaction. And then you go one second out of the Beit Midrash, out of your holy learnings, and immediately you find yourself in front of a wall. Immediately there's traffic and you're late and your wife, she's calling and the kids and you forgot to pick them up and you don't know what to do in the job and you didn't pay and there's another bill on the way and you don't have a clue of how to deal with your life and you're learning Torah and you're waking up before of dawn and you're going to the mikveh and you're doing whatever you can and you cannot feel the spirit of Hashem. The spirit of your salvation, the things that you were so thirsty to find, you cannot find them. So what should we do? Let's give up. That's it. There is no solution, right? There is no solution when you don't believe. When you don't believe, when you don't have faith, when you don't connect yourself to the soul of it, there is no way out. You're stuck. You're stuck in a world of religion with no real answer to your emotional problems, to your fears, to your anxieties, to your stress, to your pressures, to your patterns, to your post-traumas from your childhood, to situations that you cannot even remind yourself of because you're so scared and you blocked them when you were five and that's it and they're blocked and sealed and no one can touch them, and they are the main problems that are causing all of those domestic spheres that you experience, and they are not accessible. So what are you going to do? Keep Shabbat. It doesn't help. It doesn't help to solve those problems. It's fantastic. It's amazing. We believe in it. But it doesn't answer your emotional needs. It doesn't bring you to real happiness because you can find yourself upset and angry, furious in the middle of Shabbat. Finding yourself in the middle of your learning, in time of Mincha, in the Beit Midrash, furious, losing your mind, so terrified, so nervous. How come? If it's supposed to be the solution for our problems, if that's the will of Hashem, why can't we find true happiness? Because Hashem is not a book. Hashem is not a wall. Hashem is not the wall of tears. Hashem is not the Western wall. Hashem is behind that wall. You know something interesting? When you want to understand the verse that is saying that Hashem is behind that wall, do you know where is that location of behind that wall? The wall of tears? tears? It's in... The, 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 in the place that we're standing and praying, this is behind the wall. The temple was in Harabait, in the mountain that is behind the western wall. That was the place that Hashem was when the temple was built. So the place that Hashem was at was in the temple, inside Kodesh HaKodeshim. Where is that today? It's behind the wall. But Hashem then told us, I will stand behind the wall. Where is behind the wall of those days? It's where we are standing today, in front of the wall. So where is Hashem? Hashem is with you. Now you're going to the wall and you're crying to Hashem that is supposed to be over there. Hashem is not over there. Hashem is behind the wall. Hashem is with you. Because you yourself behind the curtain. Because Hashem is with you under those 51 gates of contamination. Now the problem is that we don't hear that voice of truth enough 
to wake us up from our deep sleep of low self-esteem, depression, fears, anxieties, and dark, bitter sadness that is destroying our mind on, 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 on daily basis, every moment. Every moment you lose your mind. Every moment you lose track. Every moment you don't know what to do. Every moment you need a solution, you need a salvation, you need an answer, you need a guide, you need, you need an advice, and, and, and there's none. You're calling rabbis, you're calling teachers, you're calling friends, you're calling your parents, you're blocked from every direction. Try to talk to your parents. No answer. No one can help you over there. Try to call your friends. Blocked. No way to receive any quality, good, holy, pure, cleansed, purified information. None. Call rabbis. Biggest joke. <laughs> the biggest joke. I'm sorry, I tried that so many times. You can wait, and sometimes you should pay, and no solution. Even if in the end, after you paid, you would be answered, great, it's worth it. But when you pay and you don't get anything from it, you go and you ask and you receive an answer, and you go and you try to keep. A person got troubles with his wife. He's going to a rabbi, the rabbi is telling him, you need to keep Shabbat, you need to eat kosher. He's going home and he's trying to fight with his wife on the fact that they need to start keeping Shabbat and eating kosher. And that she will not gonna bring those sausages that she likes so much and that they cannot go to visit her parents anymore. And that's it. What do you want her to do now? She wants to kill him. He's crazy. Now she will kill him now. And why? Because he wants to keep Shabbat. But Shabbat was suggested as the solution. And we believe that Shabbat brings Shalom. We believe that Shabbat is the time of peace. But there is a way to access Shabbat. There is a way to enter to Shabbat. And not all the entrances are alike. Not everyone will enter to Shabbat to find a way how to keep Shabbat in the same way. The first Shabbat that my wife and I decided to keep first Shabbat in our lives that we decided to keep because we wanted to keep Shabbat for many Shabbatot before we started but in that Shabbat that we decided to keep Shabbat in the first time of our life in that day we helped uh, the sister of my wife to take, uh, she wanted a, a dog and we brought her a very cute puppy, a white dog, to her house. She lived one hour away from our house, she lived in Tel Aviv. We drove Friday morning to her house, we brought that dog, it was a sweet dog, she was very happy to receive that dog. Things looked amazing. One hour before Shabbat, first Shabbat in our lives that we decided to keep, she's calling my wife crying. I don't know what to do. The puppy is under the bed and he's screaming and he's barking and he's terrified and he doesn't move. And I tried and I gave him and I pet him and I called him and I put music and I went out of the... <laughs> Nothing helped and she was terrified, hysteric, doesn't know what to do. 30 minutes closer to Shabbat, 10 minutes before of Shabbat, don't know what to do. What do you do? We jumped into the car and we drove in Shabbat and my wife, she's crying and I'm crying and we're driving to save her sister from that poor puppy that is crying under the bed. And that was the first Shabbat that we wanted to keep and we couldn't. Why we couldn't? Because Hashem didn't want us to keep Shabbat? No. For the fact we know that from since the next Shabbat until today, we kept all the Shabbatot. We were very happy. Also, when we came back home after driving to Tel Aviv and back, we kept that Shabbat all the way until the end of that Shabbat. But we need to go, had to go through certain kinds of challenges that were challenging our inner will, our heart, our intention. And it is higher than Shabbat itself. The intention that you have while keeping, being observant, keeping Torah mitzvot, this is what that really Hashem is asking from you while keeping Torah mitzvot. Because if you will think about a person that been educated in a secular area family, no connection to religion, 
First time and only time he heard about God was when it was written in a children's book that a little girl, six years old, was asking not to pee in her bed and she was asking it from God. That's his connection to God. Doesn't know anything. Children's books were saying Elohim. That's what he knows. Doesn't know anything. Written God. Doesn't believe. Doesn't have no faith. Now that person, can you judge him on not being observant? No. Can it be that Hashem is disappointed from him for not keeping Shabbat, for not drinking Chalav Israel? No way, right? For not putting Tfilin Rabenu Tam or davening Musaf before of Chatzot Yom? No. Why? Because he's not aware to all of those concepts. Even now, when he is watching us search for something else and found us on Google, he doesn't even understand what Musaf is. And after Chatzot, before Chatzot, what it means. And in that situation in his life, he cannot be judged on keeping or not keeping to our mitzvot, the rules that Hashem guided us to keep. Now, in a different world, in the most orthodox observant area in the world, there is a holy Jew that came in a holy family to the world. And since he was three, his holy father is carrying him with him to shul, to the synagogue. And he's praying. And before he was five years old, already he was standing and praying all Kriyat Shema and Shmona Yisrael, all the blessings. And he knows all the prayers by heart and all the songs of Shabbat. And when he was 13, he already been exempt on Shulchan Aruch. So many sections. And he knows all the rules. And when he was 18, he finished the Shas, all the Talmud, all the Gemara, in the second time, with Rashi, with Tosfot. He's a genius. A holy angel live in this community. Now I'm asking you, can he be rewarded on that? Based on what? He had a holy father and the Creator decided to put him down to the world in that community and not in the Bronx. And that's the only reason why he's so holy. Because of his holy amazing parents that had Siat Adishmaya help from heaven to survive and not to be killed in the Holocaust or whatever. And finally he found himself in that situation. So how he can be rewarded on being observant if it was the only way for him? You wanted him to rebel when he was five? He didn't have no reason to rebel. He didn't have no reason to fight. Everything was perfect for him. He could grow and be observant and mikveh and everything was open for him. And he got engaged and married when he was 18 years old. And already they made a, a nice house for him close to his parents-in-laws. Everything was... What do you want him to do? Perfect life, amazing, fantastic. Can he be rewarded as that angel that we will look up to? No. It's not his merit that he achieved all of that. Hashem put him in the right place, in the right time, and he enjoyed those, that uh, prosperity, that bounty, that had been given to him by Hashem. So from both sides, you have two people that cannot enjoy or be judged on the fact that they are keeping or not keeping Torah mitzvot. But what can you judge both of them on? Who were they in tests of life, in reality? When someone talked to him or to him, if he was honest, sincere, nice, kind, patient, only on the way of the land, only on Derech Eretz, only on your attributes, only on who you really are, only on that you can be judged. Only this is what the, the Creator cares about. Was it my fault that I born in Jerusalem in a secular family with no connection to faith and to tradition? That I received a gift to my birth, a dog? It was my gift. I received a dog as a gift. When I turned 13, I received a snake. That was my bar mitzvah gift, really. I received a snake. Now, can you blame me on that? What was my fault? What was my connection? Was I part of, 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 that, of that scene? Hashem put me there with those parents, with that family, in that area, in that time. And, and, and that was the role of my life. Now, in the time, in tests of life, 
I found myself struggling, talking, confronting, dealing, meeting. And in all of those situations, I've been checked. Who was I inside? And this is why it's written, Rahmana li babai, that the Creator, He wants your heart. Because you cannot be rewarded on keeping Torah and Mitzvot or not. You can be rewarded on if Torah and Mitzvot have been offered to you, how you respond to that offering. Were you patient? Were you open-minded? Were you open to hear it, nice, accepting? Or that you ignored and said no? Were you selfish? Were you rejecting? Were you refusing? And if it never been offered to you, you will never going to be judged on it. So to all those Baalei Tshuva like me, people that are trying to find their way into the world of Torah, first of all, drop all of your self-blamings. Stop blaming yourself. And understand that we must heal our own spirits. Because even Torah and Mitzvot cannot heal us from the sickness of our mind when we are still abusing ourselves, disrespecting ourselves, criticizing ourselves while trying to do the best that we can. If on every failure that you fail, you will blame yourself on for no reason. Because you cannot judge yourself on the strength of your muscles, on your height on your knowledge, on your wisdom, on your life experience. You can blame yourself, in a way, only on your will. What was your will? And also you cannot blame yourself on what was your will in the past, because also your will in the past was only a result of who that you became to be in that moment in time. But you can only try to fix yourself today in the present as much as you can. Really, you cannot touch and deal with your past because it passed already. And the future, you cannot touch and design it because it didn't came yet. There is only one spot in reality that you can deal with and it's now. Here and now. Always in the present, you can connect yourself to the will of Hashem. And this is why the highest name of Hashem, it's Havaya Baruchu. The meaning of the name Yudke Vavke, it's I'm here with you. That's the meaning of the word Hashem, Yudke Vavke. When you say that word in the holy ancient language, Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, when you say that in Lashon HaKodesh, in the holy language, the meaning of that word is, I'm with you. I'm with you now. And your will will be answered. And your desire will be fulfilled. That's the meaning of the name of Hashem. I'm here with you and I'm going to be here with you. That's the meaning of Hashem. That's the Creator. That's who He is. Now that's who he is supposed to be for you. Now you need to get that. That you won't have solutions and answers that will come from outside. No rabbi, no admol, no righteous man, no Moses, no Elijah the prophet, and not Meshach Tzidkenu will come and redeem you. It won't happen. You need to uncover your true potential, your inner connection to the Creator, to your Creator in your zone. You need to let that light of infinity to penetrate into your bubble, to heal you from within. Now, when Mashiach will come and will wake up the hearts, He will wake up the hearts to sense that. He won't pay their mortgage. He won't come and make peace between the husband and his wife. Can you imagine Mashiach going and knocking on all the doors of all the houses? I'm not Mashiach and I'm the only craziest person that is willing to do that. It cannot be done. 
It cannot be done. Mashiach will wake up the hearts. Mashiach will come and inspire you to find yourself. And He will give you the right advice because His words will be words of truth. And words of truth that are coming out of the heart are penetrating into the heart. And His awakeness will awake your heart. And then you will find yourself with no connection to Him. He will just gonna be such an inspiring person that will wake up the hearts to find the Shem by themselves. <coughs> and then you will have a Shem. And then you will find what that you were looking for all of your life. Mashiach will not come and give you the car and pay your mortgage and help you to pay your bills, find you another job, um, reviving the dog that passed away two weeks ago. No, Mashiach is not doing those things. Mashiach will be a role model, will be a pillar of light that will walk between the people and everyone will wake up to find the Creator in their lives. Why? Because Hashem is over there. Just we lost track. We lost our identity. We're running all of the time chasing after false dreams, trying to become different. And even in the process of tshuva, in the secular world of our past, we wanted to be famous, we wanted to be superstars, we wanted to be successful athletes, we wanted to be rich, millionaires. Whatever. We dreamt on something that we saw somewhere. Oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, he's so amazing. Oh, I want to be like him. I want to be like her. Great. Those were our dreams. But also now, when you woke up in a way to do tshuva, you must stop with that pattern of trying to imitate other people. That rabbi is learning 18 hours Gemara every day. I must learn Gemara. Look at those guys. They're sitting and learning every Thursday, all night long. Zohar with Perush Bala Sulam. I must be with them. Why cannot hang out with those people? Why? Why do you look at the garden of your neighbor? It's your evil inclination that is cutting you from your real identity, from finding who you really are. You know who you are? That's who you are. Your problem is not who you are. Your problem is your self-esteem. Your problem is not that you're not successful and that you're not great. Your problem is that you don't give a chance to who you are. Because you don't know if you have the same portrait of Abraham or Isaac or Jacob or Sarah or Rivka or Rachel or Leah. You think that someone else is more beautiful than you. You think that someone has less troubles than you. But you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. So why to hate yourself before you met yourself, even? It's a complete Lashon Ara, bad thoughts, negative thoughts against yourself, judging and criticizing yourself based on your ignorance, on patterns that have been given to you, forced you to be that negative person that is judging and criticizing and breaking yourself to pieces for no reason. Because the Creator, He loves you. And even the difficulties and the challenges that you deal with in life are for your own good. And building your character and helping you to humble yourself and to connect yourself to reality. To be a realistic, normal, sane person. It is healing you. Your difficulties are healing you, helping you to be more sensitive and caring and understanding and patience and loving. All of those shames and insultings and terrifying moments that we experience built us. A friend came to me two weeks ago and told me today, I can say it proudly, I 
been abused for several years in my childhood. It took him 20 years to open his mouth and to be able to understand that he didn't molest himself. That there's no one that he can blame in his life except of what did Hashem wanted to do with him. He said to me, I felt that Hashem was with me even when I struggled the most. In the worst moments of my life, I felt that Hashem was there. And I felt that he was crying. Now still, it's not an answer to why it happened and why he had to go through all that pain. And we cannot explain the Holocaust and we cannot explain why you were late to pick up your children in five minutes and they thought you will never come. We cannot explain no situation. We don't know what you can know if you tried or if you didn't care about your children. If you care about your children, nothing to be criticized of. If you didn't care about your children, you need to rethink about your uh, life, about the list of your priorities, and you need to judge yourself again, and to try to fix yourself, and to put your children in front of your eyes and not in the back of your head, not in the end of your list of duties. You need to work on yourself and to do tshuva. What is to do tshuva? To come back to Hashem. To come back to the present. To come back to reality. And I'm saying it over and over. To connect myself to Hashem. I want to be connected to Hashem. I want to serve Hashem. Those are concepts. Those are empty words. What do you mean? Who is Hashem? What do you mean? What are you talking about? I want to be glued to Hashem. I want to feel the pleasant of Hashem. What are you talking about? Hashem told us that His name is truth. Hashem Elokichem Emet. He told us that only people of truth, loyal people, righteous people, kind people, nice people, smiling people, can be close to Hashem, can be close to Him. Because his seal is a seal of truth. And thieves and liars, criminals, vicious, cruel people cannot stand in front of Hashem. Because liars cannot be in the same zone, in the same place, in the same time with Hashem. They cannot experience Hashem's godliness. Why? Because Hashem is the God of truth. And they choose to lie. So by lying, they're making up, they're plastering reality, they're faking something. So they themselves are erasing the name of Hashem. They're hiding Hashem. Because in reality, I do hold your money and I'm faking it. And I'm telling you that I don't. But Hashem wanted me not to hold your money. Hashem wanted me to give you your money. So now I am cheating and blocking the light of Hashem. And I'm saying that I don't hold your money when I do. So I'm not allowed to do that. So I must say the truth. And if I will say the truth, immediately that curtain will be removed and the light will shine back again. Because the light of Hashem is the light of truth. So now you want to connect yourself to Hashem? Great. Where is Hashem? Connect yourself to the truth. Which truth? The one that is written in the Zohar Kadosh with the Pirush of Baal Sulam? No. To the Emet, the truth that is written in the Gemara? No. To the Emet that is written in Shulchan Aruch? No. Be truthful. Be loyal. Don't lie to yourself. Now, when you will sit and learn Shulchan Aruch, you'll come out with the right conclusions from that learning. When you won't be a liar, because if you will stay a liar, even if you will drown yourself in the book Shulchan Aruch, gonna close the book on yourself, and you're gonna sleep inside that gigantic edition of Shulchan Aruch, it won't help you and won't purify you. The book itself cannot heal you. Only the intention of your heart. Only when you're preparing yourself before of the learning and you're asking Hashem, the Creator, please 
I want to know your ways. I want to come closer to you. King David, that he was beyond genius, that he was beyond righteous, beyond holy. He said, guide me in your path of truth. Hadricheni ba'amitecha. That I'll find your truth, what in the world you want from me, Hashem. With my wife, with my children, in my house, with our family, with my financials, with my attributes, with my powers, with my energy, with my patterns, with my depressions, with my sadnesses, carrying my scars, with my pains, with my sorrow, with my post-trauma. What do you want from me, Hashem? Teach me what your will is. This is someone, something that no one can teach you. Because you're an individual in that place. And that is your connection to Hashem. Because when we're all coming to the synagogue and holding the sitter and praying and reading the same verses and blessings, what is making your connection to Hashem pure and high and different than mine? What is connecting you if not the intention of your heart? And if you've never been taught how to pray, so your prayer won't be accepted if you don't know how to read Hebrew, your prayer is done, that's it. It's written, Hashem Shomeat Filat Kol Peh, the Creator hears the prayer that comes out from every mouth. Every mouth, even the mouth of an animal, when he calls, it's written in Pilkei Shira that the grass is calling Hashem and Hashem listen to the sings and the songs of the grass, of the leaves, of the wind, of animals, of frogs. The Creator listens to the heart, to the intention of a stone in the desert, that he has a certain spirit that speaks, that vibrates that express its emotions. And you must express yours and be who you are. That's the mission of your life. No matter who you are and where you came from and what the future is planning for you. There's no connection to how you look, to how you've been educated, to how much time you invested in your learning, to how talented you are in those subjects to how high or close you are in the scales to Hashem. How close you are to Hashem depends on the intention of your heart. If you will hold that sidu and you know that you don't have a clue from which side to open it even, and you're holding it just like that and it's still closed, and you will look up to heaven and you will say to Hashem, I want to talk to you. I don't know how to do that. Please open my mouth. Let me express my needs. Answer my prayer. I promise you that that prayer will uplift the rest of the prayers of all of those ones that thought that they know something about Hashem. They don't know anything. Because before you're honest and before you're sincere and sensitive and loving, you don't have no connection to Hashem, even if you have a longer beard than mine, and a darker jacket than the jacket that I'm taking with me. Your side curls are longer, as you're giving billions of dollars to charity. You're flying airplanes with food to Africa to feed the poor. If you're arrogant and selfish, and you're chasing after respect and honor, your lust and desires, you're disconnected. It's obvious that the light of Hashem is not shining upon you. That the spirit of the Creator, that His intention gave life into this wonderful creation, made all the species and all the wonderful flowers and trees, made all the food and all the views and the seas and the clouds and weathers and sunsets and sunrises. And He made it all so beautiful. No two faces alike, no two fingerprints alike. This is the intention of the Creator, that we will be who we are, who He made us to be, different. Now when we understand that we are unique, that we are special, 
that we are who He made us to be. You cannot say a squirrel is nicer than a cheetah. You cannot. You have a certain crazy love to squirrels. I don't know. You find yourself more connected to that section of animals. Okay. But to say that it's more beautiful than a hippo, based on what? Why do you think? You're judging now the hippo on how he looks? You're so crazy. You judge animals on how they look. That's your craziness. You have opinions. You go and you judge. You categorize the animals. Those are worthy, those are not. Those are more, more important, those are less. Who are you? Do you know the benefit of those animals? Do you understand their mission in life? Do you know what they do? Do you know how many lives hippos saved? Do you know how many people enjoy that animal during generation? Do you know what it's in which way and aspect it helps the nature and balancing the, the, the world? You don't know anything. You don't know what happens with their thoughts. And you don't know what happens when they're afraid. And you don't know how the Creator listens to their humble prayers, to their desires. And you don't have no understanding about the nature of creation. And just as a silly person, you're going and dissecting and cutting and judging and criticizing everyone and separating yourself and the wide world from its creation, from its real nature of being the way that the Creator wanted to express His love and mercy. Now, because of people like us, sick people in their minds, that think to themselves that they know something, the world looks like it looks today. Because we made all those walls and all those separations and all that negativity, we brought it down into nature and we destroyed it. But there's always hope. And when we will work on our nature to revive our own souls, to come back to life, all creation will come back to life. And everything will bloom. And the redemption will take place in a way that animals won't fight with each other anymore. And there will be no plagues and no sicknesses, no anger, no bad attributes anymore. Everyone will love each other, will be nice to each other. Where in the world it's written that everyone will put fill in? Where is it written? It's written that no one will be angry on each other. So work on your anger. Bring Mashiach. Bring Mashiach. When you're angry, Mashiach cannot come and knock on your door. He cannot. He doesn't have the ability to deal with you when you're angry. No one has. You can't deal with yourself when you're angry. How do you want someone else to deal with your anger? How you will deal with your anger? You need to learn how to breathe and how to accept yourself. The only reason that you're angry is because you are not letting yourself be who you are. You're angry because you feel that you need to pretend, because you're afraid to say what you think, because you feel that you must do things against your will, because you feel that you're going in a negative direction, against the direction that you feel from inside that is the right direction. And maybe it's a result of 30 years of consistent fear that you're dragging from your parents-in-law's house. I don't know where you brought it from, but in reality, your sorrow is coming only from the fact that you cannot be that good and loving and sensitive person that you are. That's your problem. That you're afraid to be nice. Because you know that when you're nice, people are stepping on your head. And you know that when you're laughing, people will laugh at the way you laugh. And you know that if you will let yourself rest a little bit, people will criticize you on the hours you woke up in and on what kind of food and what kind of outfits and dress you were and what are you doing with your life and what, why you chose that profession and why you're not doing this and why you choose that house. And people don't let you live. And you feel so narrow and so pushed and so stressed that you cannot be who you want to be. Because you want to go there, you want to do this, you want to be a singer, you want to be an actor, you want to travel the world, you want to swim, you want to dance ballet, you wanted something, you wanted to learn Torah. And you couldn't. 
you felt that you couldn't. So today you should. And that will be the solution for your problems. If you will connect yourself to reality, and it doesn't mean to rebel, it doesn't mean that now if you're a lawyer you should quit and divorce your wife and break the house to pieces and go in it. No. You need to connect yourself to the present. Not to judge the past. Not to be angry on decisions that been took 20 years ago. You need to connect yourself to reality and to look for your way to life. To the connection with the Creator as of today. What does Hashem want from me now that I am who that I am? That now in my reality I am trapped and I have my obligations and I have my difficulties and my challenges, now I want to connect myself to Hashem. How am I going to do that? Connect myself to the truth of myself. I'm scared. Okay, I need to confront my fears. What am I scared of? Why am I so scared? And what will happen to me if those scares, those fears will take place in my life? What will happen? Okay, I cannot deal with that. I will put it aside. I will work on it in a couple of months. What can I work on? What will make me a little bit happier? What will give me more strength? How will I charge my batteries? What will give me more power? And then to try to make one step today and another step tomorrow. And every day to do something good for yourself. To reconnect yourself to your true self. Your true self is not that evil guy that you're blaming all the time. That evil guy is the evil inclination that is claiming to be you. It's not you. You are a holy soul that is trapped in a physical body. And you're suffering from it. Set yourself free by expressing the feelings of your soul. By being who that you believe you are. Let your soul be. If you're a poet, you should write poems. If you have a spirit of a singer, you should sing even if it's in the shower. You need to sing. You should connect yourself to your spirit, to your soul to your inner vibe, to who Hashem made you to be. The frog cannot sing like a bird and the bird cannot make the same noises like monkeys or elephants. Everyone got his voice. And the voice of the bird is not more beautiful than the voice of another animal, another species. Why? Because that's the voice that been given to him by the Creator. That he knows how to create the world. And if he gave you your voice and your height and your look and your life experience, you should count on him that he knows why. And there is a purpose for it. A holy one. A fantastic one. An amazing one. That can inspire your surroundings that can deliver light to your area, that can heal the world that you live in. Because people can look up to you because Hashem sent you in that place for a purpose and for a reason. People can enjoy your abilities. One needs to be famous and one needs to go undercover. One needs to go out in the world out loud and one needs to be quiet and relax and calculate every move. One needs to throw himself on Hashem and never to doubt Hashem. And one needs to talk about every step for two, three months before he takes a decision. And he and he are equal in the eyes of Hashem. And they will be judged and will enjoy the benefit of their actions corresponding to the intention of their hearts while choosing while being honest with the mission of their lives. And more than that, I cannot tell you today. <laughs> Thank you, and Hashem bless you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. 
Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.